Welcome back on this Saturday morning, a special edition of News Channel 3 with breaking and developing news that we started at 11 o'clock last night with a major vegetation fire in Ventura County. I'm John Palmenteri. And I'm Joe Butita. Thanks for joining us. And uh, it's certainly been a story we've been on for the last several hours. This fire, Solomar Beach, uh, just over a thousand acres burned. The 101 freeway has been shut down both north and south. And we have a resident that lives in Faria Beach joining us right now. Faria Beach is just uh, next to Solomar. Solomar Beach, a little bit up the coast to the uh, west, or as the freeway goes to the north, and that's Candy Duke, and who was on with us when this fire uh, actually broke out. I believe it was your husband that saw the flare up in the hills. Candy, could you uh, recap that for us and tell us what it's like for you at this hour? Sure. Um, yeah, last night my husband was actually putting the trash out and looked up and saw the uh, fire when it had just started, um, probably um, less than an acre um, of, of flames at that point and um, it's quite a change this morning uh, you know the fire fire quickly spread um, down to Emma Wood uh, State Beach Park and uh, was a little uh, pretty frightening there for a while um, looking out this morning I uh, see mostly just smoke uh, no flames on um, this side of the the hills is obviously spread um, uh, toward the southeast, toward Ventura a little bit, but um, it's a relief to see nothing but a little pink and and smoke this morning. Did you, uh, did you get vehicle. visited by any firefighters last night? Anybody from the fire department come by and uh, chat with you? Did you even sleep in the middle of the night? <laughs> well, I slept for a couple of hours. I probably went to sleep about 3.30 and, and then just woke up. Um, so, uh, but no firefighters came through the neighborhood to evacuate us. We understood that there was a voluntary evacuation for the neighborhood, but no one in our neighborhood left. Uh, some residents of Solomar um, came up here to Faria and are spending the night with, with our neighbors. Um, so... And have you I lived there a, a long time? I forgot to ask you that the last time we had you on or in the middle of the night before you went to, to, to nap time at 3.30. But have you lived there for a long time, and can you uh, characterize what it's been like to have uh, all of this happen in an area that you probably never expect to have a fire come to your doorstep? Well, it's, uh, we've lived here 35 years, and, and my family has had a house here since 1937. So, um, you know, we've we've seen a lot, a lot of ocean action and, and flooding. Um, and fire is always something that we um, certainly understood could happen. We're really close to the, the wild land, um, just across uh, West PCH, right behind our house, is uh, just miles and miles of, of chaparral and um, hills and uninhabited uh, areas. So it's it's something that we've always really understood that that is a reality and has, has been you know a bit of a fear uh we've seen what's happened at, Ma at malibu and you know we know what can happen but um it's a beautiful place to live and and you know we um are as prepared as as one possibly can be for uh whatever emergency might happen floods yes. seem to be more of a problem than fires but that's the way it goes. Yeah, that's uh, that area, as you well know, that when the uh, La Conchita uh, uh, disaster happened as well, the freeway was shut down, and there was a lot of rerouting, and, and you were right there uh, semi-trapped in the middle of it uh, as well, and you've lived through this before. Well, thank you so much for the update. That's Candy Dugan at Faria Beach, right next to Solomar Beach, and it looks like your area is uh, in the clear, but I'm sure it was a tense night. I don't know how you went to sleep last night. I know I couldn't have done that. I had a hard time sleeping after watching uh, the 11 o'clock news last yeah. night. All right, we're going to we're gonna take a look at the uh, traffic impacts right now. Uh, this is a holiday weekend. A lot of people could be on the roads heading to grandma's house or heading home yeah. from where they have been. This is our Live Ways app, which is tracking the traffic. You'll notice the area that you see here from the La Conchita area, which is to the left top of your screen, all the way down to the 33, there's nothing reported because that's all closed. Right. You can't get in from there. As we take a little closer look at the Ojai area, Lake Casitas, this is where the backup really begins. This is the back way if you're trying to get in somewhere, and it is at a dead stop right now. Yeah. You can see the the impacts and people reporting that it is just a 
near impossible way to get through. And as you go north a little bit, this is where it's all shut down again. So if you're trying to get south or north from Ventura, south from Carpinteria, Santa Barbara area, uh, good luck. It's going to be a long haul for you. The 101, again, is closed uh, from Bates Road about, about the 150, down to the 33. And if you are going to try to take the back way, the 150 to the 33 around Ojai, again, um, it, very slow go. You can see the impacts here on our live traffic app, courtesy of Waze. I've had to do that before, uh, back in the 1995. Uh, La Conchita closure in 2005, and uh, this looks like it's going to handle a, a, a big load. It's going to be a crawl, and that's at this hour. This isn't even when the major load is no. coming later on today. So others are going to go up Interstate 5 and take 166 over to Santa Maria, come down, and that's a, a five-hour drive or something close to that, and that's going to be impacted as well. And they've had some weather up there as well. So we have hard closures northbound on Highway 33 and southbound uh, 101 at Bates Road. That's the last exit in Carpinteria. And uh, hopefully we'll get an update on if there's going to be a partial opening uh, midday today, which we're anticipating based on the way this fire has burned out in some areas, but it's still very active in other areas. And there's still a lot of wind that is in that area and its own weather system as well. And if you can stay home, uh, instead of going on the roads, you know, we would appreciate you staying where you can if if you're able to do that. The Solomar fire is estimated at now uh, a little over a thousand acres. We've heard 1100 Ventura County fire calling it 1000 and we're going to go to Alan Rose now. He's tracking the winds. We've seen a, a, an interesting mm -hmm. scenario playing out where CJ Ward is. He's on the northern end of where this fire is on the freeway uh, near the uh, car more near Carpinteria, the 150 area where it starts. And then you have Kelsey Gherkins who's by the 33 and completely different wind pictures. Very windy where yeah. Kelsey is. So Alan's tracking all of that. Because yeah, what we're seeing right now with the winds is they're transitioning from the north, which really hammered Santa Barbara, Carpinteria, Summerlin, Montecito through the overnight hours. We're starting to see the winds weaken. That's some good news for the south coast. But the winds are beginning shift to shift to the northeast, and that's going to start to accelerate winds around Ventura, Highway 33, the 126, the Oxnard Plain into Camarillo. Those areas will soon be experiencing some very strong winds. So sort of picking up on the south end of the fire. Although the good news here is since it's inland a little bit, it might be protected. So this spot might not see as strong as winds of what we'll see maybe 5, 10 miles down the road. Now, earlier tonight, we did report a wind gust around 42 miles an hour. And we are under a wind advisory for the entire Ventura County coastline. Not only all day today, Saturday, but through noontime on Sunday. Strong offshore winds is what we're dealing with. And again, we might be a little protected here, but at the fire, we're to jump Highway 33, God forbid, it would be in a portion of Ventura County that could be more exposed to that north-northeast wind, and that could push a little closer to the city. Thankfully, that's not what we're dealing with now. Again, it's west of Highway 33, right along the 101, uh, but with that wind potential, we could see gusts as high today, as you'll see, 40 to 45 miles an hour. This is the specific Solomar fire forecast. Tonight, northwest winds 10 to 20 miles an hour, so it weakens a little bit, and the wind should shift temporarily to the northwest. Uh, today's humidity down under 30 percent and for tonight not really rising that much and in terms of temperatures 60s today tonight's going to be cold out there temps down into the upper 30s and lower 40s. I want to show you one other thing now we heard Ventura County Fire say this could be a days long firefighting effort. What we need is some help from other nature not going to see it initially with winds but is there rain in the forecast? We are tracking another system moving down the coastline. No help on Saturday. Still looking at lots of sunshine through the day today into the overnight hours. But by Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, here comes the next weather system. Now, much like what we've seen so many times in the past, it's not going to be a widespread rain event. I think the rain, what little of it there is, stays mostly north of Santa Barbara and Ventura. And unfortunately, when we don't get the rain, but we get the energy, Guess what, guys? It means another wind event. That's right. More winds in the forecast as we head towards early next week. Let's send it back to you.
All right, Alan, thanks very much for that precise update as we uh, begin this Saturday morning now, and the sun expected to come up about 7 o'clock, and we'll get a, a good big aerial view. But in the, in the night hours, we have some new technology now that we're hopefully able to show you and what it looks like in the dark of the night. Certainly see the fire with this shot, but look what else we have for you this yeah, morning. Yeah, if we take our Waze computer, you can see this is from the Ventura County Air Unit, and this is from their Copter 7. Um, there it is, right there. So this is the night vision. They're conducting reconnaissance on this fire, trying to figure out exactly um, how big it is, the scope of it, what things could possibly mm -hmm. burn, different areas that they need to put more attention to. And these are from night vision goggles. So we're getting shots from the Ventura County uh, choppers that are in the air. This is a good one that was taken back when the fire first started several hours ago. But again, the, the night vision shots here are interesting. You really see the glow of that fire from a different look. So go to the, uh, the one where they have the, the big circle around yes. it no, right there. Now, for our viewers that are watching, uh, as, as some areas cool down, you can see, and this is where we're getting some of our shots along the waterfront and Selamar and Emmawood as that cools down. This fire is going up and over the ridge, which we can't quite see from those Back PCH. in this area, you can't and that's, see it. Uh, you know, that's something that Alan's going to have to explain to us about what's going to go on with the wind back there, and we still don't know. Maybe Captain Lindbury will tell us what the access roads are back there. They're right. probably not uh, extremely good, but they have this thing planned out, and the Ventura County Fire Department for uh, years have gone back there to do some pre-planning and say, how do we get in here, what roads we can get into, but it's still not the easiest thing to get to, and dozers are going to have to cut some line, and it is going to be a very physical uh, challenge on the ground and a, a big air attack overhead to try and stop that from doing anything in the big wildland areas, as Alan was just saying. If it should catch a canyon or, or wake up again with some wind and blow off over uh, 33 and get into that area where the Santa Ana's like to roar through those canyons, uh, we're going to be back into some very big trouble. And right now, no structures have been lost. And speaking of roaring through the canyons, we're going to go back to C.J. Ward. He has moved locations. C.J. was at the uh, th near the 150, the uh, northern end of where this fire is burning. We're going to go back to C.J. right now, get an update. He has moved from where he was. C.J., what has changed? Okay, we're live along the 101 just south of Emma Wood. We're right on the shoulder of the freeway. And if you look over my uh, left shoulder here, you're going to see one of the hot spots here. That's a ravine that's been burning. We got the helicopter, if you can listen closely, the helicopter's up there and probably about to do a water drop. Uh, firefighters have been moving toward this area. In fact, if you look a little bit farther to the south, you're going to see another hot spot right there, and the firefighters lined up along the freeway to try and stop this fire. Now, the area we were at was probably about a mile back, mile and a half back. They've made progress there, but this is the front line right now. They've got firefighters uh, lined up down at Emma Wood. They've got them over toward the uh, river bridge as well. But uh, this is what they're concentrating on. You can see it right there, burning right down to the freeway. And again, this ravine over here, it's, it's uh, very active. And, and the other thing I should point out, too, if you can, we can go back to show this shot one more time. Look to the right. You'll see where the flames have actually jumped over the freeway and is now on the beach side, starting to burn the trees. So firefighters have just moved down there hoping to uh, try and put that hot spot out. But this right here is one of the, the hottest parts and hottest fronts of this fire that, that uh, firefighters are really trying to, to focus on. All right, C.J. Ward, thank you very much. And you saw the helicopters are active and making drops this morning. So the firefight from the air and from the ground uh, is underway. And you're getting a real good look here from where C.J. was, that it's, it's still burning very hot back in those canyons. We may not be able to see it as much because it dips down behind the hillside, mm -hmm. but uh, it, is, it is still going very strong back there. And the uh, firefight uh, sometimes involves the uh, chainsaws, as they, they say, and there have crews uh, ahead of this that are trying to cut some lines and create a break so two things will happen there if the fire gets there it slows down doesn't have as much fuel to burn that's what's going on way in front of this right now that we don't even see but they are out there right now uh, cutting it and then the second thing is when they start laying the FOS check down that's the uh, orange fire retardant right. they don't necessarily throw it right on the flames they try they to block it from going somewhere paint, else yeah they paint a line around that so when it gets there it just is nothing to burn and it just falls apart and that's how that goes on and that's all 
being planned out right now, starting with the chainsaw crew. And depending on where local communities and homes lie, the ocean will also play a, uh, you know, a, a firewall mm -hmm. block as well, because it won't burn in the water. So firefighters are going to keep a close eye on all of that and see if they can maybe push it to an area where there's no homes and, and the water could just make it burn itself out. Burning hot right there. Yeah, it sure You is. are looking at live coverage of the Solomar Beach fire that broke out just after 11 o'clock last night, burning up to 1,000 to 1,100 acres estimated at this time. It's been burning all night, fanned by very violent 50 mile an hour plus winds. And we have multiple News Channel 3 crews on all sides of this fire and in the air this morning on this Saturday morning. And we are live streaming on KYT.com if you uh, have had to evacuate your home or if your television mm -hmm. signal, I know mine at home because of the winds here in Santa Barbara, was not working well. If you can live stream us on KYT.com, please do. That will be your best option if you have internet access. Stay with us. We have more continuous coverage live from on the ground and in the air of this developing major story out of Ventura County, the Solomar Beach fire on this Saturday morning.